Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel, The KR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about primitive or basic data types in C. In our previous video, we discussed about basics of data types and size of each data type. The primitive data types, this is most basic data type and all other data types are derived or made from them only. The primitive or basic data type, every programmer should know about it. If you are starting or beginning with the C programming and primitive data type is playing a major role because based on your data type selection, compiler will allocate the size for your variable. So, in this video, we will deeply discuss about the primitive or basic data types. Basically, we have a following data types. For an example, following primary or basic data types. Integer, float, character, double, boolean and void. Integer. Integer means for used to store whole numbers like 5, 8, 20, 50 or 2000. So, these all are the cases we need to select an integer. Then floating point or float. These refer to all the real number values or decimal points. For an example, 40.1 or 20.5 or 820.673. So, for all those cases, we need a floating point. And character. It refers to all ASCII character set as well as single alphabets for such as like R, A, B, C. These all are the places we need a character. And double. These include all large types of numeric values that do not come under either floating point data type or integer data type. So, these cases we need to select a double. Boolean. The Boolean in C is a fundamental data type. Is most and most that can hold one of two values. For an example, true or false or one or zero. Void. This term refers to no values at all. We mostly use this data type when defining the functions in a program or not for point we will use the void. We can discuss now about each and every steps with more clarity. First we can start with the character data type. So as we discussed character data type holds a single character and character stored in 8 bits or 1 byte of memory. 8 bits is equal to 1 byte and character can also be signed and unsigned. You can see the syntax now. Signed character name or character name. These both are same. If your doesn't mention anything, then automatically or default it will be considered as a signed. But uh, we need to mention the keyword unsigned for using the unsigned character. So in our previous video, we discussed about the sizes, how it will represent for uh, unsigned and signed. So I have mentioned those video in the description. So if you want to watch it, please watch. And this is a simple program I just have typed for to find the size of character and I have used the compiler of for an example 64 bit operating system I have used and size will vary based on compiler. So compiler to compiler size will vary. So always I am recommending to find out the size whenever you are going to type a program first find out the size then based on that you can decide. So here I am using 64 bit 64 bit operating system. So for me, the basically character is one byte, but here I have used a 64 bit operating system. So you can see it here. I have just declared the data, the name called data, and I just single character and I'm just finding the size. And for finding the size, I have used the size of operator. So for me, it displayed one bytes. That's what we have mentioned it here. The character stored in eight bits or one byte of memory. Integer data type. So, integer data type is mainly used to store integer values and requires memory according to the value of the integer. And size varies. The range of values integer can store also varies from compiler to compiler. So, you have to be very careful when you are going to type a program. First, you can understand whether you are doing it in 30 bit, 32 bit or 64. But recently, all compilers or modern system comes up with 64 bit. So, first you can find the size and based on that you can decide. And the syntax for declaring integer variable, integer, just I have used the name called data and I am assigning the value of 10. So, then I am for unsigned integer, you have to use the keyword called unsigned. So, unsigned integer value equal to 20. So, this is the way you have to declare your integer values or integer data type. This is a data type and this is a value and I am assigning the value. This is a simple program to find out the size of integer. For an example, if you want to understand in your computer or in your compiler or in your ID you are typing a code and you want to understand size, then you can use this program. So here I have calculated long integer size, 
short integer size, unsigned short integer size, and long integer size, and unsigned long long integer size. You can see there here. So basically, like in my program, say a size of integer is four bytes. So based on your compiler, you can understand how like how you can find or how much the storage will be taken care when you are declaring with the integer variable. So here you can see one more time for declaring an integer variable, you have to use the keyword called int, then you, are, you have to mention your variable name. Float. Data type float used to store real numbers in 32 bits with up to 60, sorry, 6 decimal points precision. 6 points or might be in some way can consider like 7 points including one real number dot. So there also if you will consider, uh, might be it will come as 7, but basically it will come up with 6 decimal points precision. The range of value that can be represented by a float is approximately 1.2e hyphen 38 to 3.4e plus 38 hyphen in the sense it's minus. Okay there. So based on that you can just select the floating point value and all. Okay where we will use the float. For an example in your program might be you will declare like 1.4 or 3.14. So simply you are creating or just want to deal with a, uh, like float numbers or decimal points precision. So in that case generally we will use float. But in application wise where we will use the float. So float is mostly used in graphic libraries for high processing power due to its small range. So in that areas we are using a float. So syntax is you have to use the keyword called float. Then here I have used the variable name called my float. So here I have declared float my float equal to 3.14 because it's a decimal point representation. So after point you can have a six decimal points precision value in float. This is a normal uh, program to find out the size of float. So in my compiler, since I am using 64 bit operating system, so in my ID, so for me it returns with 4 bytes. Double. The double data type is used to represent double precision floating point numbers. So double precision means is more precise and for storing large number, we prefer double over float. In real time case scenario where we will use double. For an example, uh, to store the annual salary of a CEO of a company, then for more accurate choice, we can choose double. And like trigonometric functions like sin theta or cos or tan, mathematical function like square, those all are will return uh, double values. And it's similar to the float data type, but it provides a higher precision. And it can hold a large range of values than a float variable. Then at the same time, it also requires more memory. Okay. Basically, double variable occupies 8 bytes of memory on most modern system. And again, it will vary compiler wise, com compiler by compiler. So you can also find out the size in your compiler. So for the syntax for declaring a double, you can use the keyword called double. Then this is a variable name. Here I have used a variable name called my double. This is another simple program to find out the size of double. So here for me, it's returns 8. Here also I'm using size of operator. Boolean. Boolean is a data type has only two possible values. One is 0 or 1 meaning true and false. Basically Boolean will be used in the logic wise or if you want to use the flag in this areas we can use the Boolean. So Boolean is a data type which can store true or false. Every non-zero value corresponds to true while 0 corresponds to false. So it only deal with 0 and 1. Syntax is like bool is a keyword to represent the boolean data type and x is the name of the variable here and initially declared with a false and very important thing is if you want to use a boolean then you have to use the header inclusion called standard boolean dot h so std bool dot h this should be included otherwise your id or compiler will throw the error see the program here here i have used the two header inclusion one is standard io another one is standard boolean so here I just I have simple program. I have declared a variable of boolean with a keyword called bool. So here you should not use the keyword called boolean. Here is the keyword called bool. So value is the name. I initially declared with false. I am checking in a if loop. Uh, that means if uh, condition statements like whether it's true or not. If not, it will go to the else. So for my cases, the value is equal to. That means since it is false, so it will print x is false, meaning. Since it is false, it will go to the else loop. So this condition will be 
executed so it will print x is false next is void data type void is considered data type for organizational purposes and usually specifies function return type why we are considering a voice as also a data type because when you are going to declare a function you need to keep data type for example integer your function name or character your function name or unsigned integer function name at the same time we can use void with no return value so in this index is saying about when you are mentioning a void here so no return value at the same time we are mentioning here as well there was no arguments but so for mentioning if you don't want to return any value then you can select a void but this will be used only in two places one is with function second one is you can use for declare a pointer variable but see here when you are declaring with a normal variable you will this line will generate a error for an example this is not allowed according to the c programming language so this is the purpose we are using a void data type hope you have very clear idea about the basic data types and where we are using all these data types um, uh, the size of data types how to choose it and how the that size of data type will vary from compiler to compiler so this will be more useful uh, when you are going to start a type of program and when you are going for an interview again in interview these are the questions might be will be asked and this is one of the important area where every interviewer will focus on it because every engineer or software programmer should know about the data type as a first step yeah thanks for watching this video if you like it please share it with your friends if you want to stay with us for more technical content and please subscribe our channel thank you so much have a nice day